Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Barakha Hakodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Barakha Hakodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessing, salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. And um, this lesson, Lord willing, it's going to be quick and edifying. It's a lesson that's been in my spirit. You know, the spirit gave me this lesson, as you can see, January the 30th chapter, uh, the 30th chapter, <laughs> January 30th, you know, and um, I, I, I pinned it down or typed it down, you know, so I could remember to go back, you know, whenever the spirit allowed me to put it forth, to put it on wax. And, um. I was just, you know, uh, supping with the spirit, you know, just meditating, um, going through different precepts and, you know, pretty much just 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 digging, you know, in, 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 in hopes of the Holy Spirit hitting me to put a lesson together. You know, so I'm going through the scriptures and you know, going through different videos and I come across this video on Google Plus. You know, and. Um, these guys call themselves the Israelite branches, uh, Israelites, the, the branches. You know, um, another camp that's an offshoot of Great Millstone, I believe. Uh, uh, one or two of these guys left the uh, Baltimore camp. Not sure of the details. It really don't matter. But um, as you can see, uh, no nukes are in Second Edge of 16. Like, 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 bruh. Like, bruh. You know? But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the scriptures. You know? Because as you can uh, see, it's, it's all spiritual. You know? It's all spiritual. I didn't even know that that was the lesson that the spirit was going to give me, you know, because it's a couple of lessons that I got. I call it in my spiritual Rolodex, you know, that I, you know, I, 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 I meditate on and see which 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 one the spirit will allow me to uh, to put forth. And it's this one. And they name just so happened to be Israelite Israelites, the branches, <laughs> you know, so you can't make this up. But anyway, this is Matthew 15. <laughs> In verse 13, <clears throat> it's like it in verse 13. But he answered and said, I started 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. You see, every plant that the heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up, man. You know? Because as it is written, what, what 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 did the Lord say? This is um the book of Second Ezra. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter five and verse twenty three. It says, uh, I started 22 and my soul recovered the spirit of understanding. And I began to talk with the most high again and said, O Lord, that bearers rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof. Thou hast chosen thee one only vine. You see, that's what the Lord has planted, you know. Now, that vine represents what that represents the children of Israel that the Lord chose. But it goes deeper than that. It goes deeper than that. Let's go to John 15 and 1. I am the true vine. You see, it says that in 2nd Edges, the Lord chose one vine. This is written in red. This is our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. What does the husbandman do? He plants. So back in that Matthew, Yahweh Shah said, what? Every plant that my father have not planted shall be rooted up. Verse two, every branch. What, what, what's these guys names is? You know. Israelite branches, right? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. So we have to abide in the vine. We have to abide in what the plant that uh, uh, Yahweh has planted. Because that's how we become fruitful. You see? And it says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. What's the fruit? Verse 
This is Proverbs 12 and 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Same thing it says in 8 and 20, Proverbs 8 and 20. A man's belly, I mean, it's talking about your mind. You got silly ass, goofy ass niggas talking about your spirit in the belly. Straight madness, man. It says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So it's talking about what? It's talking about Hebrews. Let's get this. Hebrews 13 and 15. It says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to the most high continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. You understand? So the sacrifice that we're putting forth is this work. The work that we're putting forth is what? The profession. Our profession, our, 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 our confession, man, is teaching this word directly and correctly. It's bearing record of Yahweh Shai, as it is written in 1 John. You see, two thirds of our people and the rebels are going to be condemned. Why? Because they didn't believe in the record that the Most High left of His Son. Which was the record? It's how to properly break down this 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 book. It's the understanding of what's written within these pages. You see, let's go back to uh, John. 15 and 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit, which through the spirit that word purges goes into what? A, a, a pruning, you know? And when you prune a tree or when you prune a vine, you clip off the extra uh, um, uh, twigs that's not needed, man. So it's the same thing that we must do in, the, uh, 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 in this walk of ours. You know, it's purge ourselves, cut off the excess, uh, uh, it says mortify your deeds on the earth, you know. Verse 3, and that says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. So you have to abide in Yahweh Shah in order to teach his word directly and correctly, in order to bring forth the precious fruit that the Lord is looking for, man. You see? Verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So that's why you see guys like uh, uh, these guys is the latest example, you know. So you see guys like 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 Nick Nick and his his Nicolites, man, you know the ITR Israelites teaching rebellion, you know. You see uh, uh, guys like the Adam Abbott cats, man. You see Sakari. You see why? Because they didn't abide in the vine. They didn't abide in Yahweh Shai, you know. Just because they call on the name of Yahweh Shai don't mean that they're abiding in Yahweh Shai. As it is written, why callest thou me Lord, Lord, if you not, do not the things that I say? The scripture says this. This is uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 14. Uh, I started 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. See, these are evil men that we're speaking of. Verse, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou has learned oh, and has been assured of. Oh. Knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. Oh. So what? You're learning from the men that Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai has sent. That's how you abide in Yahweh Shai. You understand? It's abiding in the doctrine that the uh, Yahweh Shai gave unto the men here on the earth that you learned from. You see? Um, from there, let's go to Matthew 3 and 10. It says, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. What's good fruit? Teaching this word directly and correctly. How can you do that? If you abide in the vine, if you abide in Yahweh Shai, if you abide in this doctrine. Let's get it. This is Acts chapter 2. And 42, and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine. Is it the apostles doctrine? 
No, they learned it from Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai said, my doctrine is not my own. He learned it from his father. You understand? So this is the, this is the manna from heaven. This is given from Yahweh himself, which means what? That Yahweh planted it. You see? Acts 2 and 42. <clears throat> and they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So you got to continue in the things that thou hast learned. You see? That's how you abide in Yahweh Shah, by abiding in the doctrine that you were taught. Being assured of whom you learned them from. Specifically talking about these guys, because these guys, they, 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 they left the correct doctrine, man. Nick, niggas like Nick, ITR, Sakari, these cats, man. They left the doctrine of life, man. They left away from the vine and started teaching things contrary, which what, what does the Bible say about that? This, this is an example of bad fruit. This is, um... Revelation 22 and 18 For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book If any man shall add unto these things The most I shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy Oh, the, the missiles ain't in 2nd Edward 16 According to Nick at night and, and ITR niggas Israelites teaching rebellion Hey, hey, them, the missiles ain't in the Bible at all America ain't even in the Bible, according to them guys, man. You know? And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh Basham Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Meaning what? The Heavenly Father is going to root them out. The axe is laid to the trees. Them niggas is chopped down and those roots is plucked out, man. According to Matthew, uh, that uh, both Matthews that we read, you know, Matthew 15, Matthew 3. And from there, let's go to uh, Matthew 7. <laughs> this is Matthew 7 and verse 15, because it's going to further explain what the fruits is, you know. We can only bring forth good fruit if we abide in the vine. And we abide in the vine, therefore we we are planted of the heavenly Father. If you go outside of that, then you're gonna be rooted up, man. This is Matthew seven and fifteen. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. You see, what's the fruits? Is they speech? Are they teaching the, uh, the truth directly and correctly? According to Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. So, so you, you can see the fruit. Nah, that's bad fruit. That's evil figs. Nah, I don't want that. You see? It's verse 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. We already went into what their fruits are. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't go to a, a thorn bush or, or you know, and, and gather grapes off that mug. No, you don't. You see, verse 17, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, meaning what? The correct doctrine. You see, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Because it all goes back to your mind through the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. If your heart is evil, then you're going to speak evil things. If your mind is right, you're going to speak right things. And only way that's possible is what? John 15. Now are ye cleansed by the word that I speak unto you, man. It's all through the word. John, uh, 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 St. John chapter 4. The true worshiper is going to worship in spirit and in truth. Meaning what? According to what the Bible says, man. We have a more sure word of prophecy. You understand? Verse 18. It says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Yeah, man. You know? These guys can't speak wholesome things because what? No truth is of the lie. A little leaven leaveth the whole lump. So if they take, they, they, they say one thing is wrong. Well, guess what? That just tainted everything else, man. For, uh, Marie 18 again. A, tr a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit 
is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. Meaning what? By their speech, by their talk. This is, um, I want to say it's Rock 27. Yep, it's the Sirach 27 and 6. I started 5. It says, The furnace proveth the potter's vessels, so the trial of man is in his reasoning. That's why in Proverbs it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, because out of it are the issues of life. Your heart is what brings forth, uh, your, your heart, your mind is what formulates your thoughts. Your thoughts turn into words, your words turn into actions. So if your mind is renewed according to Romans 12, according to this word, then are you cleansed? You're going to speak right things. You're going to perform right things. Verse six, the fruit declare if the tree have been dressed, so is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. You see, the fruit declareth, meaning the speech, his words declare it, man. Verse seven, praise no man before thou hearest him speak, for this is the trial of men. You know, and it all goes back to what? Making sure that you're teaching it directly and correctly, speaking wholesome words. Wholesome words is what? The words is written within these pages, man. Teaching them as, as you were taught. You see? Because every plant that the Lord have not uh, uh, planted shall be, shall be rooted up, you know? Because the Lord compares uh, uh, th those plants, those 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 bringing forth good fruit, you know, to his righteous prophets, the ones he sent, the ones uh, uh, he planted. The bad fruit, the evil fruit is what the, 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 the plants that he didn't send. There are false prophets as it is written. This is um, Jeremiah. Twenty three. And I started thirty one. It says, Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, man. These guys are telling false visions. Because they're not they're not breaking down these 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 visions and these dreams that our righteous forefathers had, man. They're not telling them correctly. Therefore, hey, they tainted it, hey, like we quoted earlier, you know, no lies of the truth. So when they twist or or, or 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 change up one thing, well then that that just corrupted the whole thing. It says, "Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams," saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord, man. You know, and it says by their lightness. That word lightness is the Hebrew word. Pachazawath, Pachazawath, or pa, Pachzawath, right? And it says recklessness. Let's get that word. This word recklessness, lack of regard for the danger or consequences of one's actions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. We read, we read the consequence of one's actions. You add into the word. You're going to get the plagues that's written in the book. you taken away from the word. Your name going to be taken away out of the book of life, man. Meaning you're going to be plucked up like we read in that Matthew. You see? They don't regard that, man. See, guys like that think this is a light thing. Like they, 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 they think this is a joke or a game, you know? Yeah, how about Shem Yahusha is going to bring swift and gruesome judgment on the guys that's playing with his word, man. You know? What we read and said, hey, it shall be cast into the fire. Who you, you don't want that, bro. You know? You don't want that. But uh, Matthew 7. I think that's about it, though. Just um Salaki, bear with me. 
Okay, Kasalaki, yeah, uh, I had to search up a scripture real fast. Uh, I quoted it earlier, and I'm going to just read it, Lord willing, and um, close it out if the Spirit don't give me anything else. This is Jeremiah 24, this is verse 1. Yahweh Basham Shai showed me, and behold, two baskets of figs were the temple of the Lord. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smiths from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. One basket had, so this is going into uh, when Nebuchadnezzar uh, came in and, and, and carried Judah away captive, right? It's verse 2. One basket had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten. They were so bad. The word naughty, rye, <laughs> which is bad, evil. You see? You know? It says they, they couldn't be eaten. They were so bad. That's Guess what that is? That's the bad fruit. That's the evil fruit that we just read about in, in, in Matthew, you know, in, in the different scriptures, right? It's verse 3. Then said the Lord unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs. The good figs, very good. And the evil, very evil. That cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Again, the word of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the power of Israel. Like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. For I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down. And I, oh, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And I will give them in heart to know me that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their power for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. What does that sound like, man? You see, back then, this is symbolic of the one third. You understand? Romans 15 and 4, the things that are written aforetime are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So those men who hearkened unto the words of Jeremiah and submitted themselves unto Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon and did the things according to what? According to the word of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, the Lord set his heart on them for good. The same thing that's taking place today. Those that return and taking heed to the words of the prophet, you know, who knows that hey, 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 we ain't taking up arms, man. Vengeance is the Lord. So hey, hey, we got to deal with what we got to deal with, man. You know, same thing as back then. This is verse eight. And as the evil figs, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus saith the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah. And what does Zedekiah do, man? He rebelled against uh, 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 the word of Jeremiah. He rebelled against Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. You know? He was carnal as all hell, man. This represent what? Two-thirds of our people today. Guys that's what? what twisting the scriptures, changing it up, doing their own thing. That's exactly what Zedekiah did. He was doing his own thing, man. It says, so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurt, to be a reproach, and a proverb, and a taunt, and a curse, in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. And that's what happened to them back then. But today is likened unto what, man? Martial law, FEMA camps, pestilence, famine, all that is coming today, man. And they're going to be utterly destroyed. Ultimately, the, uh, uh, that last plague is those nuclear missiles. Which, what did, what, what did the Matthew say? What did Yahweh Shah say, man? You know, every tree that, that beareth not good fruit shall be... Uh, hewn down and thrown into the fire that's ultimately talking about what the nuclear missiles man you know so us brothers that's in the know man let's uh, watch and look at these guys man as an example of how not to be and let's pray that Yahweh Basham Yahushua cast us not out of his presence and take not his holy spirit from us as our king prayed in Psalms the 51st chapter man so, Lord willing, I hope and pray that this was edifying. I give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baracha HaKodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who preach in the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. You know, my voice was starting, starting to go out, but it's all good, you know. 
Hope this was edifying. Shalom, brothers.